Hello, everybody. What is good? What is good? Do here. I am going to share with you today. I had an awesome call with a sweet soul from Florida today, and we were just talking. She asked me some really fun questions, and so that partly inspired this message. But there's also been some reinforcement around this topic as well. What really came up, and she was asking in the perspective of just life advice, right? And one of the things that I had shared was about checking your motives. And the context that I was sharing it was in the building of a thing. So for example, are you building from fear? Are you building from love? Because unless the Lord builds the house, it will not stand, right? We know that. But a lot of times we like to take things into our own hands and build it in our own strength and our own understanding. And we kind of get off the path, right? And it's not going to have the fruit. There's going to be a lot of frustration. There's going to be a lot of chaos. It's just going to be something that is painful, right? There's consequences of being out of alignment. So today's message, I'm going to really just share three practices with you that you can really focus on to help you prepare for things so that you don't have to deal with the consequences of being unprepared. Okay. Cause that's not as awesome as it sounds like sometimes we, we think that procrastinating or being lackadaisical is actually a benefit, but not always. Cause sometimes we have to clean up a mess from not being intentional and present and exercising wisdom. Okay. So first thing is just like we can activate things, we also want to have a deactivation process. Because if you are honest, you also know that sometimes your thoughts are going down a crazy path and you're going down like this rabbit hole, right? And when momentum is built, it is really difficult to stop. Okay, so you've got to have some sort of deactivation process to help you take the energy out of whatever it is that you don't want so that you can actually focus on what it is that you do. It really helps you just be more self-aware. It helps you pay attention to witnessing what you're conscious of, and it helps you to really be, be present and intentional on a whole nother level. So for example... What are some practices of deactivating things? Okay. So just like in a moment where you could just choose to murmur, to complain, you activate patience and self-control. Just like in a moment where you could be worried or anxious, you activate praise and you activate joy. Just like in a moment where you could lean on your own understanding, go into like hyper control mode, you, you activate peace and wisdom, okay, and trust or surrender, right? You can activate things. So when you have thoughts, though, that are negative, that are fearful, that are heavy, and, and they've just been thoughts that you've kept thinking over and over and over again, they have a strong, some sort of deactivating process. So here's some examples. One of them is taking a, a notebook page like this and just writing three pages nonstop, just literally brain dump whatever is on your mind. I used to do this practice every morning and something really interesting started to happen. What actually started happening was as I was writing, I was starting to get tired of the stories that I was writing over and over and over again. I was tired of hearing that story. I was tired of telling that story. I was tired of letting that be my story. So in hindsight, that practice alone deactivated all the things that I had going on up here right? It just brought them from darkness to light. So I could see what's going on and then actually decide like, what do I want to do with that? Like, do I want to keep thinking that? Do I want to keep living under that limitation and under that limiting belief? Do I want to keep projecting this onto my life and dealing with the consequences of that? Or do I want to shift things a bit? So that is a very, very helpful practice. Again, it's a process. So it takes some time, but it's very revealing. Revealing of what you're carrying in your heart, what you're constantly thinking about in, in the context, right? Is it is it negative? Is it positive? Is it in alignment with God's word? Very revealing. So that's an example. Another example, um, some people have used like a rubber band around their wrists and they can like snap it. You might see that in some sort of recovery program. If that can help you to, to like get yourself back into alignment, that's great. I know for me, I usually need some sort of physical activity. So something that you can do too is just breathing. So 
when you are like a, a five breath breathing process is something that actually requires some focus and attention. And you literally cannot be caught up in whatever you were thinking about and focusing on this at the same time. So for example, you would put your hands in your stomach and you'd make it a giant balloon. So you just would breathe in first for five. Okay. So you breathe in for five. So you literally feel your stomach cave in. Okay. And then you would breathe out of your mouth for five to do that. And you could do that for even a minute and it will shift you entirely. So that's an example. Another example would be to, um, you could stop, drop and pray. That's one that I say, but sometimes it's just like taking a lap. <laughs> I know that I used to do this in track, right? Like in an in between, you would just take a lap, right? Or if you weren't doing something right, or like a punishment, you would take a lap. Um, this isn't punishment. This is to help you realign, but you get the idea. So even just this practice of taking five, whatever that happens to be for you, but it is really, really important to have some sort of practice where you're doing that and fill it with whatever you need. If you need to get outside for a second and just get some fresh air on your face, if you um, need to even just have like a bathroom break and just go <laughs> and be able to pray, whatever you need, make sure that you take that time. So that's really important. And then another one that I can think of, sometimes making an actual noise can rewire you. So even just like a humming noise and getting in tune with that noise. And I know this sounds interesting, but it's something that engages your whole body. So for example, just going, mm, mm, Mm. just keep practicing doing that same noise. And eventually what you're doing is you're tuning yourself, literally like your whole being comes into alignment with that tune. So uh, even if you have a word, maybe that you're saying, I mean, it could just be Jesus, but whatever your word is, even if you have a word that you're saying, these are all ideas, but come up with practices that will literally help you deactivate. Okay. So that is very, very powerful so that once you actually deactivate, some people it's taking a nap, by the way, but the idea is to, since you can't stop the momentum that's been built, you want to take your focus off of that and do something different so that you can bring fresh perspective and build new momentum. Okay. Much easier to build new momentum than to stop existing momentum. Okay. And if you can't stop momentum that you've built, you've got to stop yourself for a minute and then build new momentum. So that's the whole idea behind the deactivating process. The next thing would be giving yourself permission to feel good. Like be selfish enough to make it a priority to feel good every day. What do I mean by this? To some degree, you have to be selfish in order to spend time with God. A lot of times we want to just get out into the doing of our things and just knock things out in our calendar, right? We're just so busy and we glorify that. Or we just want to check all of our social media profiles or just see what other people are up to, right? But it is actually selfish to set aside time and seek God and align with God and get you know, feed on the word and, and get wisdom and guidance and direction and support and just spend time there. That's actually a selfish thing to do. You've got to care enough about yourself in order to recognize what you're missing out on when you don't spend that time, right? Like, so for example, apart from God, I can do no good thing. Apart from God, I'm nothing, right? So it's like, I know that I don't have any value really to bring to the table because I'm not operating out of my most authentic self when I'm not connecting with my source. I'm not. So I've got to be selfish enough to not go get all caught up in pride and like go do things my way and plan my whole day and actually set aside a time Set aside time, <laughs> set aside time to seek the Lord and really develop that relationship so that I can actually live and understand what my most authentic self is and live from that. So I would say that make sure that you set a time, set aside time to, to be selfish, so to speak, but to really recognize who your, your most authentic self is so that you can show up as that person and bring that person throughout your day. So give yourself permission to be selfish. If you are used to putting everybody first, give yourself permission to be selfish. And then the other thing that you can do, this is my, my last tip 
is to set up meetings or dates with yourself. A lot of times I have found, and I also struggled with this, but it's something that I like thoroughly enjoy now. Um, so there's hope if this feels awkward, but actually setting up time to have meetings with yourself, like literally once a week, at least blocking an hour of time for you for whatever it is that you need to do, whether that, that could be reading something that could be going uh, out in nature somewhere that could be uh, getting your nails done. That could be um, soaking in prophetic music or prophetic worship, whatever it is that your soul needs, blocking that time on your calendar and making it non-negotiable. It could be planning your schedule, getting organized, whatever you need to do, but it is legitimate non-negotiable you time. And it's just as important as any other meeting that you would have in your calendar. And what that trains you to do is it starts training you to evaluate what is going on. Like, what have you been thinking about? Where are you at emotionally? What's on your heart, right? Like, what do you need? Like, it starts teaching you to really care for yourself. So all of these things that I'm sharing are buffers to really help you become more self-aware and become more intentional so that you can as the, the song goes, check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? You want to check your motives. Like, what is your why behind doing things? Are you doing it because you're afraid that? Are you doing it because if you don't, then? Are you doing it because you're passionate about it? You're called to it? You're, you're divinely inspired to do it? Or is there some other motive? Because how you start a thing is usually how you finish a thing. So it's really important to recognize what you are sowing, because the energy that you bring to a thing, whatever you are sowing into a thing, that is what's going to come back to you. So if you are sowing fear, if you are sowing doubt, if you're sowing insecurity, you're going to get more things to be fearful of, to be doubtful of, to be scared of. You're going to see that reflected back to you. If you're sowing joy and faith and enthusiasm and passion and inspiration, you're going to see that come back to you too. And it can be in the form of divine connections. It can be in the form of open doors. It can be in the form of just like God's goodness orchestrating things, right? That are greater than you thought of or could have imagined, right? That stuff starts to happen. So it's really, really important to understand what am I committed to? The word says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So Unless you are checking in with yourself, how do you recognize if you're double-minded, right? A really great example is the self-help industry, right? So if you are of a kingdom mindset or a kingdom background, self-help and exposing yourself to really good teaching, maybe, or a really great podcast or really good information could make you double-minded because you could be hearing a lot of methods and practices and strategies that are rooted in the world and could also be rooted in fear when you are most aligned when you're living from a kingdom mindset and a kingdom perspective and divine inspiration and good orderly direction, right? That is unique and personal to you. Wisdom, discernment, right? How can you really operate in your calling and your gift when you're getting all this mixture? You've got to be really clear, right? And it's easy to become double-minded if you expose yourself to everything and you're not taking every thought captive. You're not taking every word captive. I know for me, I had to stop listening to certain things. I had to stop reading all these books. I had to stop investing in a lot of different courses that, that weren't uh, actually developing what I needed, Right. Because they ended up setting me back, right? Like I might learn something different, but if it's not relevant to, to what I'm called to do, then it's really not fruitful is another way to say that. So all that to say, hopefully this message blessed you, but these are some practical things that you can do to really check in, to help yourself develop more self-awareness and to test yourself and just see what are my motives? What is really important to me? Am I double-minded? Am I operating in faith? Am I operating in my most authentic self? Am I really showing up in the way that I've been planted here to show up? And what can I shift? And what does the path look like to do that? Okay. All right, guys, if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you do that. You can also connect with me over on julianapage.com. There's a lot of really great resources over there or also over on Instagram at Miss Juliana Page. All right, guys, until next time, stay blessed.